guys, I've been thinking, why would someone buy a Panigale V4 over Panigale V2? And this popped in my mind when I took the Panigale V2 for a ride last time. I'll be honest, I haven't been riding lately. And also something happened in my personal life that kind of shifted that away a little bit. I want to take a little bit of a break. I might tell you that on another story because there's somebody else involved that I probably should ask consent for before I give out that story. Before I dive into that topic, I got a lot of stuff to do today that I really have to finish. So uh, let me take you guys, let me show you what I gotta do. And uh, let's talk about motorcycles a little bit. Well, first things first, if you guys didn't know, we do have a Vespa Sprint 150 with an Acura exhaust, British racing green color. This is actually a special edition, gold wheels. It's got uh, brake levers with uh, go fast lever ends there. And uh, it's got olden suspension too on it. It's got carbon fiber. That's carbon fiber right there. Carbon fiber right there. Olin's is, if I could show you guys, right up here, it's got Olin's suspension front and back. But uh, I gotta grab the keys and I gotta put this thing to charge because I think the batteries that I haven't been able to use this for a while. Look, it's got even carbon fiber over here. So let me go grab the charger. Well, while that is charging, next on the list is going to be to go fiddle around with the DFL V4. We got our CTEC charger right down here, if I could show you, right there, it's charging. Hopefully by the time that we're done with the other stuff, this thing will be charged and uh, it'll be Vespa time. Oh, it's even got resumable mirrors, you see I forgot about those. So here's the DFL V4 and uh, we did put some carbon fiber parts on it already. So all the plastics are changed with carbon fiber. If you guys haven't seen the video, it should be probably on our YouTube channel by now. And uh, if you can't tell, I got a red sticker on it because we weren't sure if you want to keep these uh, carbon or I thought maybe if you add some red stickers, it would match. Uh, but right now, this is too light. We had the sticker for something else. And then now I got to run to Nicholas from Auto Laboratory just to see if he has any wraps in stock that matches. So let me remove the tail because I know that you can use that as the color code thing. And then I gotta go all the way to Nicholas's shop to take this to see if we have any kind of vinyl that matches this so that we could also get him to put that vinyl on that carbon intake. So let's go. Here at Nicholas's shop, it's called Auto Laboratory. It's a mouthful to say, but let's go check inside because he's got some cool cars and I'm as much of a car guy and as I'm a bike guy. Let's see if he's got wrap for this. I really wonder if he has anything cool in here. What's up, Nicholas? Hello. How you doing, man? Everything good. Good? Nicholas, do you have a red that matches this? Let's check it out. Let's go. Look at all the film that he's got here. He's got more stashed here, guys. So he does uh, a phenomenal job wrapping cars and he does PPF. And I think if you guys watched our videos, he did some work on our SV2 and he did uh, wrap our M1000RR with PPF. Let me just uh, sit down with him and see if we have a red that matches this and then I'll tell you guys about that orange car that's here. Okay, now that we know that uh, the Ducati is blood red, now I can enjoy this thing. So, if you guys didn't know, as I said, I'm a big car guy and this is one of my cars. I'll show you guys more about cars, but so Nicholas actually fully PPF this car for me. It's got PPF all over the place. And uh, so this is a 2022 Camaro ZL1 with the 1LE package, which means that everything you see on this car is stock except the forged wheels that I put on it and uh, I tr looked really hard to find Chevy center caps for it so that it kind of looks stock because if you ever see a Camaro ZL1 1LE it has black wheels and uh, I mean I really like the look of these wheels because look at the dish in the back or the concave it doesn't have dish but it's how concave it is and for the longest time since I'm OCD I 
was barely driving this car because the, for the first few times that I drove it, it was getting chips and scratches and if you know GMs, they got the worst paint of all. And I really wasn't driving my car and I love this thing. It's just like the motorcycles because this is such an experience. Nobody needs 650 horsepower V8 supercharged engine to drive around town because it's the same type of driving that I do as the riding that you guys see me do. But this is so cool. I was even debating on getting another one. This is my second one, by the way. The first one caught fire. That's for another day. I'll we'll talk about it another time. I had this from the car that caught fire. I've never installed it on that car. We actually took the time to install these on the car because it's got carbon fiber on the hood from the factory. I think this is the only part that's not factory other than the, the wheels. And let me show you guys installed inside. I've had my fair share of really fun or the best cars to drive car type of cars. And this one holds its own. This is a keeper. I don't think I've ever kept a car this long as much as I've kept this car. 650E brought this car from Ohio, I think Christmas of 2022 for me. It was my Christmas gift. Amazing Christmas gift, right guys? But anyhow, uh, I gotta get going because I, I'll sit here, just look at this car all day long. It's kind of dirty, but, and uh, let me show you something. The PPF on this thing is magic because Next time you see a car with PPF, look at edges. This thing has no edges showing on it, and that's what uh, Nicholas does. He works his magic. But uh, speaking of magic, I'm gonna beam myself back to our media office because we gotta check out on that Vespa to see if it's charged. And also, let's talk about the Panigale V2 versus Panigale V4. Wow, it's not summer yet, and it's pretty hot outside, guys. I really wonder, because the last time I took the Panigale V2 for a ride, I was wondering, do you really need to buy a Panigale V4 if you're just using it around town? This is so nimble, so nice. Yes, it doesn't have all the power in the world, but just that lightweight feeling of the bike is so much more enjoyable to, to have around in, term, in terms of a bike that you use on the road because it's just you're cutting in and out of traffic or um, you know, you're trying to park it, move it. I don't know, so it got me thinking. That's why I was, remember the, Vespa that we had because I had the same dilemma when I had to make a decision on purchasing the Vespa because this is 150 cc it's called a Sprint 150 and you could get the 300 cc Vespas and I think bigger is better because take a look I forgot to show you guys earlier this thing has a damn Brembo front caliper that me and Michael Knight fitted on here it is so tight in terms of fitment but it's on there. This thing is just as ridiculous as some of our uh, superbikes get. In terms of Vespas, this is actually pretty ridiculous. I have a couple of other stuff that I haven't installed on it, but going back to this subject, it was all about getting a 300cc Vespa because it's a badass 300cc uh, GTS. Michael Knight actually owns a scooter shop and he said, Manny, go for a ride on a 300 GTS and go for a ride on a Sprint 150. He gave me both bikes back to back. You still need a motorcycle license for this in Florida because it's a 150cc scooter. So it was the same dilemma as when I was riding that Panigale V2 and I was thinking, man, you know what, maybe because I've had them all that I could say Maybe the Panigale V2 makes more sense. In an ideal world, all of them make sense, right? We want to have all of those things. Um, but if you're trying to decide, if, it should, if, if someone asks me, should I get a Panigale V2 or a V4, I'm going to ask, why do you need a V4? The V2 might be just as fun, it's less expensive, and uh, you know, you put an exhaust on and do all that stuff. You could put some nice wheels, even upgrade the suspension if you want, but you could do all those things to Panigale V4 as well. Well, there's Herman. Hello. He's the editing genius we have behind scenes, but I'm using his table because I have to focus on this M1000 RR, 650 Eves M1000 RR. Let me move this out of the way. Sometimes not everything is done on camera, guys, other than this time because this is our vlog. But uh, I got to change these caliper bolts because we don't want just any old stainless steel caliper bolts or aluminum, whatever those things are. I got to put some Protide bolts on this because Probably not today, but another day, we're gonna go do the official walk around of this beauty here. But it has to have these bolts on it to match all the other bolts we put on it. So that's one of the final things I gotta to do today. Don't forget your antices, guys.
both sides are done and uh, this bike is officially ready for a walk around I think let's take a look we got our Proti blue caliper bolts on both sides if I could get squeeze in here right there and uh, I guess next time you guys see this bike maybe on the walk around video we got a, quite a few videos of it on YouTube already we have a little toy here that we've never used. We got some scales to weigh the bikes. And uh, now that I'm thinking, it might be a good idea to weigh this thing. What do you guys think? Should we, should we weigh the Pentagalli V2? Yeah. You see, I'm the, I'm the king of distraction, guys. Let's uh, grab those uh, scales are right here. So I, I don't know how hard it's gonna be, but let's do it, guys. Yeah, go for it, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the scales are broken, man. <laughs> I don't believe that. Wow. It's saying 448. Now this whole video is ruined. Because <laughs> we started saying, would you like a Benigali V4 or V2? I don't know, man. I want to pull that thing off. Give me a second. I really think there's something wrong with this. I'm awful. still not convinced, guys. I want to test this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess now we're blaming our uh, race leg flooring. Okay, so let me pull the bike forward. There we go, is the zero still here? Let's take a look. Uh, oh, that's a big difference. 398. 398. Okay. I think it's Weighing in at 402, which is believable for this M1000RR, as much as I love BMWs. <laughs> and if you don't know why, you haven't watched us enough. Okay, the V2 is gonna redeem itself. No more gray pig in here. Four? Yeah, it was like 447. That's a difference of like 10 pounds. Yeah, I mean, this is more believable. I, I still can't believe it's so heavy. 436, 35, 36. So the V2 weighs 435 pounds, 36 pounds. Holy cow, it's actually heavy. That changes the question, guys. The whole thought process goes down the drain after this because I was saying, is it worth getting a V4 over a V2? Because the V2 feels much more nimble. I thought it was lighter, but it's, I think it's marginally lighter, if anything. But what we're gonna do is that I, I will go to Ducati, Miami, get a stock V2 and weigh it, and we'll weigh a stock V4. Maybe I gotta take fuel with ourselves because none of their bikes probably have full of fuel, which I think they might, but I'll talk to them and try to arrange it. That way we have it. I guess uh, I'm just even more confused, so let me take that Vespa out. It's running. I gotta just uh, tighten up the battery cover. This thing actually has a Acura exhaust and it has a catalytic converter in it. It has a little cap right inside of here because you don't want to smell like you just mow the lawn after you want for a ride with your Vespa. But this is cool. Let me grab my helmet. I haven't ridden this thing for a while. That's where the battery was there. But uh, let's just go on for a quick ride. Well, I guess it's the silly things in life that are the most fun, just like this. Vespa with all the suspension and loads of carbon fiber, a Krapovich exhaust, and uh, we changed something called a variator on this. This thing actually accelerates like crazy right now. And we were talking about how light and nimble the V2 feels, but I guess the V2 is not really light, which is surprising. But it goes to show you, uh, I don't know, maybe it's not the weight that makes it feel so agile, right? Mm -hmm. 
a Vespa 300 is not much heavier than this either. I could probably say that, but the Vespa 300 feels a lot less agile than this when you're going around. And with this, you want to go around cars, you want to beat the traffic, you want to be able to park it wherever you want, you want to squeeze through tight and small places. And the V2 really feels like that compared with the Panigale V4, and that's why I was starting to think, you know, why would someone buy a Panigale V4? I mean, yes, it's kind of a, the top of the line super bike that you want to get. But uh, the V2 is, I think, just for going around town, it's a better choice than the V4. Did I mention I'm going to MotoGP guys? I'm excited. That's why I keep saying it because uh, it's only once a year. Maybe this year we'll go somewhere in Europe. I would love to go to Misano, to go to MotoGP in Misano. That would be kind of epic. And MotoGP actually, if you guys watch, the pit bikes are scooters. They get around the pits and uh, if a rider falls, they get taken back to the pits from wherever they fell on scooters. Actually, the team members get around on scooters to go into the trailers and and to go around the track. They use their little scooters. And uh, funny enough, Ducati doesn't make a scooter. So all the Aprilia guys run uh, Vespas because Vespa is owned by the Piaggio group. But uh, Ducati guys, Ducati doesn't make scooters. So they actually use uh, Kimco scooters, believe it or not. Obviously, they're not branded. But they say uh, Ducati on them. I'll make sure to show it to you guys. It's another way of getting around on one of those electric scooters. It's kind of hilarious to lock up the rear wheel on this thing. Just like that, it didn't squeal so much. This is a very, very fast growing construction town area of uh, Miami, so. Ducati Miami actually used to be right here and uh, they demolished the building for building a taller building for development sake so now they're actually in a place called Doral we'll go visit them sometime for sure let's go pick up some ice cream we are here at salt and straw to get some ice cream the Vespa's right there I hope it doesn't get towed but let's go check out some of the ice cream they have in this place I don't know if you can see it, but they got a lot of funky flavors here. I think I'm just gonna grab a kitty scoop because their scoops are pretty big. And uh, the cornflakes cookies and Mary and Berry jam is pretty good, but I think today I'm gonna go for the Panther coffee and chocolate stress leches. That's kind of the go-to ice cream over here. Oh, I got my ice cream, guys. Here it is. And uh, I don't know, today was a shocking day, right? We weigh the V2, it weighs more than I thought and um, somehow it feels a lot more nimble than the V4 does. I guess I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to enjoy my ice cream. Next time you guys tune in, I'll be at Austin for the MotoGP guys and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you then. Thank you for watching.